Hi, Darren. How are you? Can you hear me there, Snake? I can. How you doing, man? I'm fine. Are you fine? Aside from having to answer the same questions over and over and over again. I've been doing it for 35 years. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Are you dialing in from wonderful Long Island, New York, like I am? Uh, yeah. What part of Long Island do you want? Long Beach. Uh, I'm on uh, Amity Harbor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good seafood in your town and my town. Yeah, uh, I love I love Long Beach, man. We have friends out there. It's great. Nice. Well, hey, the gang's all here. Huh. New record. What I want to ask, I don't think I've seen you been a being asked in interviews before, and that's the producer of the album, yes. Nick Rascalinas. I first became aware of him because he grew up with a band that I worked for and loved called Super Drag. That was their like sure. childhood friend. I was wondering when Nick first came onto your radar as a producer. About, probably about a year and a half ago. Um, it, it, he, Rachel lives in Nashville as, as is Nick. And so um, there's a, you know, like a, it's a very small, uh, scene down there everybody mm -hmm. knows each other and so through mutual friends they met and nick had said to rachel that he wanted to produce a skid row record and so rachel calls me up and we're talking about where we're like ah he's just being nice you know he's being a nice guy well because he's done you know obviously Foo fighters and hailstorm and rush and alice in chains and so on and so the list goes on and on yeah and so we kind of left it at that. We didn't, we didn't put too much into it. Not really nice guy. And, and I, you know, uh, I was familiar with his work as was Rachel. The whole band was. And so next time they hang out, he's like, listen, dude, I'm really serious. I want to produce a Skid Row record. Mm -hmm. So we're like, man, this dude's like, he's for real. So we go, okay, we're going to take you up on it. And we, we sorted out all the logistical stuff that needs to go along with getting a guy like that on board and, and, you know, uh, let our record label know. And they were obviously really excited and, and uh, yeah. motivated and as we were. And so that stuff taken care of, which really wasn't all that difficult. Uh, then we got on a zoom call, the band and, and Nick, and he explained to us what kind of record that he wanted to make. And he basically said, which was really, really interesting and stuck with all of us that he wanted to reintroduce us to us. And I was like, wow. So he's like, yeah, I want to reintroduce Skid Row to Skid Row. And what he meant by that was getting back to like the essence of, of why we started the band and what motivated right. us to start a band and, and what drives us. What's like the really, the deep, underlying uh factors that motivate us and 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 allow us to continue doing this um and at the end of the day you strip away all the layers of life that you've lived in 30 some odd years from when you started the band mm -hmm. and you get to that core uh, 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 uh character uh, uh essence wow. character yeah yeah and it's always it's about um being like it's like that 16 year old teenager who's standing in front of his mirror pretending to be ace freely or or uh or eddie van halen or randy rhodes or angus young and uh and you just hope to be able to play music for a living you know, you want to be able to make records and you want to be able yeah. to sustain yourself. Like everybody wants to sell a bazillion records. And obviously not everybody gets that opportunity to. Of course, that's in our brains. But at the end of the day, we really just wanted to play guitar and write songs for a living. Yeah. And that's kind of how Skid Row was born, was out of that that uh, shared passion and uh, ambition to uh, achieve that. And 30, you know, we've been in a band together for 37 years now. And wow. lo and behold, we're still able to do that. Yeah. So he wanted to, and that's all because of our fan base, because people still 
they still can relate to us and they still love what we've done. And we're very proud of our history as well. We don't, you know, we don't deny it or anything like that. We embrace it, of course. Hey, Ozone Monday, that still has its place in history. I, I think, I think though, you don't always get all the credit that you deserve because you've played with a lot of other artists over the years, sometimes anonymously or undercredited, but you never slowed down no matter how successful Skid Row was. You were always open to collaborations. Yeah, man. I mean, it's all about living and, and the life experience, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I can remember being, I traveled cross country with one of my older brothers uh, when I was 15 years old. And we went from New Jersey to, to, to California. He was a, he was a tractor trailer driver. Mm. So he had to take a, a, you know, his 18 wheeler across the country and asked me if I wanted to go. And it was the summertime. And I'm like, absolutely. And I became so uh, enamored and, and uh, mystified by the enormity of the United States and, and every, all the different uh, experiences that go along with traveling 3000 miles over the course of seven days. And and I, I, I knew that I wanted to be able to see the world mm -hmm. by playing music. And, you know, as a band, we had never been out of uh, the, you know, the tri-state area when we first started touring with Bon Jovi in 89. And then we got to see the country and then the world. And well, right. To cut you off. Weren't you like the first band to play in Bhutan and all these obscure Asian markets that are like the third tier that you could say they're, they're like the Peoria because on the first, the first tour, like you do Chicago and then the second one, you do the one that's closer to the airport out. Right. Yeah, out right. <laughs> you did the kind of like the Peorias of Asia at a certain point. We did, man. We did some crazy. And that's all within the last, you know, decade or two that we've been, you know, playing in Borneo. You yeah. Know, like that's just <laughs> insane. Like, I didn't even know that was a real place. And so this, we, we, we've been afforded such a great life. And like, I, we say it every night on stage that, that you know, because of, of the audience, we're able to play music for a living. And right. it's one of the greatest gifts that I've ever received, that we've ever received. And so now, now, now getting back to Nick, so Nick grew up on our band and he is really, really uh, well versed in in our history, uh, our our whole history, and so again, it was him saying, "We need to make a Skid Row record. I need to reintroduce you guys to Skid Row." And so, in thinking about that, um, we realized that we were going to have to put ourselves our, our complete trust in him, and uh, and we really had to leave our ego at the door like that was really really uh imperative that we do that and so we did and we came in and we gave him all our songs and we're like have at it let's go to work and he basically we we sat there and deconstructed and reconstructed everything hmm. the thing that was really cool he had a very uh, uh focused vision as far as what he heard in his head and as we progressed and we were, again, dismantling these songs and then rebuilding them, you started to see it come to, to fruition. And here, here's like an example of what he would do. Like sure. we, all, we all hung out, not hung out. We set up our amps and, and drums and everything in the live room of the studio and cranked everything up and, and just started playing the songs. And he would be there with the four of us and start going, I love that. I love that. But right there where you're going into the chorus there, why don't you try doing something like you did in the B verse of monkey business? And all of a sudden it's like a light bulb goes off and you're like, yes, I remember. And, uh, and because, you know, after making records, you make your first record in 1989 and now it's 2022. There's a lot of life that has passed in that time. And one of the things that we do as a band is every record we attempt to do something different because we don't want to be redundant mm -hmm. and it becomes its own thing. And as you keep doing that, 
you might not realize it, but you've gone really far away from where you once were because everything's different. Life has happened, you know, 30 some years of life. So yeah. the, the approach though, if I can interrupt you for, yeah, go ahead. for Rick has definitely changed over time. That sounds closer to a Rick Rubin approach because the people I know that did albums with Nick in his early days, he wasn't afforded the luxury of going, well, you know, I worked on these multi-platinum albums, but it sounds like he takes more of the de deconstructive Rick Rubin approach of going, play me the songs. These are not good enough. <laughs> Let's work on these. And this is why you got started as a musician. It takes you back, but it also moves you forward at the same time. Yeah, without a doubt. It was really, it was, uh, every day it was a challenge. He would put forth a challenge to you. And his demeanor is such that you want to uh, step up to the plate and accomplish what he puts in front of you. Um, because you want to make the guy happy because he's yeah. just that kind of guy. Yeah. You know, it's really funny. And thus you're really satisfying that inner need, uh, that inner creative fire uh, that pushes you to create. And the more he was doing it, the more, like he wouldn't sit there and go play this. That wasn't him. Unless he heard us doing something whatever and go instead of playing it there play it up a whole step i mean uh, an octave something like yeah. that but most of the time it wasn't play this it was remember when you did this i would like to hear something like that and then all of a sudden everybody is in the moment and throwing ideas out there it's not like it's just rachel and i it's everybody in this room and we're throwing ideas back and forth until we get to where we're all like yes that's it wow, that was fun. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't like a, uh, a process that was frustrating. It was a process that was very rewarding mm -hmm. on so many levels. And it made us a much better band, uh, made me a better writer, a better guitar player, mm -hmm. uh, and, and really, in all honesty, like a better person as well, a better bandmate. Wow. Well, yeah. Which songs from this record are you playing on tour? Granted, you don't have to spoil the set list, but is it like two to three songs from the new record tonight? Yeah, we've been playing. Uh, we've been playing uh, the Gangsel here and tear it down, and then uh, we'll we'll be adding. Uh, I think we're going to add Time Bomb into the set as well. Hmm. Now, making a high profile record like this, are you the kind of person that goes? Well, so our next record, or do you say, hey, no, not doing, not even thinking about it for three years? Well, it's weird because that would normally be the case that we wouldn't think about it. But with Eric being in the band now, he brings a whole new wave of creativity to the, to the band. Mm -hmm. uh, we've already started working on new stuff and because we're excited, we're excited. We have like this, this uh, electricity and this positive enthusiasm that's going on within the band. Hmm. I just want to keep writing that. Well, Eric, uh, great reviews he's got, and I've only seen it on YouTube, and he sounds fantastic. I know that you heard him early on through American Idol, that audition, but Heat's a great band as well. But besides the musical chemistry, what's your common ground with him? Is he a big wrestling guy? Is he a big Van Halen guy? He's a... Uh, he has a lot. I don't think he's a big wrestling guy. He's, but we, we, we talk about boxing a lot. Cause he, he, he started training when he was like, you know, in his early teens boxing. And so we talk about, and I turn him on to like all the old school Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali yeah. stuff and just stuff that he might not have seen being in Stockholm. Uh, but he's a, uh, he's got a, a, a really creative and positive spirit about him. And that's where I think that we, we, uh, ha our common ground lies in, in that. And his influences are very much the same as ours are. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we have the same ridiculous sense of humor as well. And so, you know, like when I first met the guy, I met him at the airport in JFK on a, you know, he had a layover and we were flying to Vegas to go do the residency. And we had never met before. And we had to do a show together in four days and we had never really met. I mean, we did, we toured with his band heat in, yeah. uh, in, in 2018, 2019, I believe. And, but it was just very casual. Hi, how you doing in the hallway type of thing. 
And so this is the first time uh, we're ever getting together. And we, as soon as we saw each other, it was like a big hug and went to the bar and grabbed the beer and could not stop talking to each other and laughing. And it really did feel like I knew this guy for decades. And so when we, it was, it went so well that we, you know, we had a couple hours there at the airport and I, I, you know, I was a little bit nervous wondering like, what if this guy is, is not cool and he's an asshole. And so what I did was after I, I, it was going so well, I called Rachel up who was already in Vegas, I believe. And I'm like, dude, we've got problems. He's like, what? I go, this guy's an asshole. I go, this guy is an asshole. He's an egotistical prick, man. And I go, I honestly don't know what we're going to do. And he's like, are you serious? I'm like, yep. And then all of a sudden, here's Eric laughing in the background. <laughs> I'm like, no, dude, this guy's great, man. This is going to be awesome. And, and it really was. And we, we met up in Vegas with the rest of the guys. They all met him then. And then we went out to dinner and drank a bunch of beers together. And it was it really, he fit like a glove. And uh, and then we went and jammed for the first time on that Wednesday. Uh, yeah, we flew in on Tuesday, which was the 22nd. We jammed on Wednesday. It went great. We had to figure out some finite details, segues, things like that. But as far as the performance of the songs, it was great. Like the guy obviously did his homework. He's been doing this a while. He knows this band really well. And then we rehearsed again on Thursday. It was better than that. And see, so we're like, you know what? Let's take off Friday and just go bang it out on Saturday. And so we did. So we played that gig Saturday night with this opening for the Scorpions at the beginning of the residency. And that show was literally four days after we had really met him and three days after we jammed with him. It's crazy. Wow. Uh, I was supposed to be at that show. I believe I was in town for the Dave Lee Roth residency. Was that the December, January? Was that when that was or March? No, it was March. March okay. 20th. We flew so in on March 22nd and we for our first show. We all met March 22nd for the first time. We rehearsed March 23rd and 24th, took off the 25th, and our first show was the 26th. Then I was in town for my anniversary, and thankfully I forgot that. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> so, so back to you, you know, down to the last two topics here, being mindful of your time, because the next person has to ask you these same questions. Uh, <laughs> how good. far are things planned ahead for Skid Row? And I say that because you've also found success as an artist manager. So you know yeah. the lay of the land better than most artists who've been around 30 plus years. Right. So are you already looking at 2023 and 2024 for Skid Row? Or have oh, you yeah. Learned oh, yeah, yeah. We're pandemics like, oh, OK, one month at a time. No, 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 no. We're, we're already booking out 2023. Yeah, for sure. Not so much 2024. That'll come later, uh, probably in January, February time. But yeah, we're 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 on next year already. We've been actually for a little while. A lot of this stuff that we're doing right now, when we go over to Europe in, in October, November uh, in the UK, a lot of that stuff is from two years ago. Oh. That, you know what I mean? Yeah. So a lot of stuff is being pushed uh, because it was delayed uh, or, or, or postponed. Yeah. A lot of that stuff is now coming uh, forth. And we have to yeah. uh, honor our obligations, as it were. And so um and we will and and then we were so we're we're in the states in like september 9th i believe is our first show back mm -hmm. uh and then uh, end of october into november we're in uk and europe um and then back in the states and then december in uh uh um australia and new zealand mm -hmm. and then off for christmas and in january and february and start back up in march Wow, that is a well-oiled machine. Good for you. And last yeah, time. it's been great, man. I mean, we've been, you know, it's really funny is that and, and uh, you know, we're we're starting to get some some really good attention because of of the of the songs that we've released from the record so far. And Eric yeah. being like just again, like he's the guy. You know, he he was the guy that we needed. Mm -hmm. and, and there's so much goodwill being built and stuff, and and people are are responding, you know, are, are, you know, just seeing the numbers of, of new music of ours being streamed and stuff like that. It's really impressive. Hasn't happened in a long time. 
and so we're 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 acutely aware of, of it and and we we want just to make the most of it because it's just it's such a great time to be in this band but you know uh it, it, over the course of the last 20 some years uh we've been touring doing you know uh, uh an average of over 100 shows a year right uh, it, it was, your weekend warriors yeah they'll fill up the calendar yeah and so we and and so we've been whether people have realized it or not, uh, how far under the radar we may have gone, we've been active this whole time. So this is nothing new to us to be going out and just touring like crazy. Um, making this record the way we did, you know, with Eric doing eight of the 10 songs vocally in Stockholm before we even met him. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that's just crazy. He, he recorded 80% of our record and we didn't even sit in a room with him once. You know, and that was done, you know, remotely. And Nick was very patient and Eric is very talented. And but we were able to convey uh, what we were hearing and then he was able to do what he does as a singer. And it was great. It was really a, a it was a pleasurable experience. And then when we were in Vegas, we we went into the studio in Vegas and finished the last two songs vocally there. And it was it was fun. It wasn't. It wasn't work. It really wasn't work. I mean, it is work. It is but work. It well, I'm glad to hear that there's more to come, to say the least. And the last thing before I let you go, all the New Jersey, Pennsylvania bands seem to have had offers to tour with David Lee Roth and his solo career. Did Skid Row turn down the A Little Ain't Enough tour or any other Roth tours? No, we never got offered a Roth tour. We toured with Van Halen with Sammy in the band in 1995, but never ever, uh, you know, like, look, I'm a, I'm a huge Van Halen fan, no matter what. So if we got offered, I would love to go out and do shows with David Lee Roth. I would love to go out and do shows with Sammy Hagar, you know? And so that would have been, uh, that would have been an honor to have been asked. But unfortunately, no, we never, we never were. I figured because Trickster turned it down, but Cinderella did it. I, I just thought that Skid Row would have had that. I wish. Why did Trickster turn it down? Because they got offered the Warrant uh, tour with Firehouse. and oh, wow. Or that's at least what Steve told me. Right. That it was like more money, playing to bigger crowds and the shows. Half of them haven't been canceled already. Which one is it going to be? <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. Okay. <laughs> Well, the bottom line is thank you for the many years of great music and looking forward to seeing you live in New York finally with Eric Into. Yeah, we're going to be back. It looks like I'm not sure when next year, but we'll, we're like, I love the Paramount. So I'm hoping that we can go back there. And, you know, we've been we've been attempting to set something up there for to do like a yearly thing around Thanksgiving and, oh, nice. and just, you know, help out some local charities and stuff like that. I'd love to be able to do that. So hopefully we, that can come to fruition uh, sooner than later. Awesome. Thank you for your time, Snake. Have a great rest of the day there. Yeah, bud. Thank you, Darren. I appreciate you. Take care of yourself. Enjoy yourself out there on Long Beach. You too, Amityville. Take care. All right, buddy. Bye-bye. Outro -bye. cast. <laughs>